All right, so today what we've got is we're gonna change the upper uh, control arm bushings on the, uh, on the Jeep. The upper bushings are bad. They're bad because they're rubber and the Jeep flexes too much. So uh, might be kind of hard to, to see there, but uh, they're all blown out and sloppy. This one over here is also bad. Um, so we're gonna change them, but we're not putting rubber bushings back in. Um, so, you know, the lift kit has a Terraflex Long Arm Pro lift kit and it uses Johnny joints, uh, or Heim joints. People call them different things. They're, they're just, well, whatever you want to call them. They're spherical bearings. That's what they are. Uh, a spherical bearing looks like this. These are, uh, what I'm going to put back in from uh, Iron Rock uh, off-road. So the way these work is we got rid of the rubber. Uh, rubber's great right right out of the off the lot. Uh, if all you're doing is driving your rig around on the pavement and stuff like that, then it works fine. It cushions vibration and makes for a nice smooth ride. But it limits your travel. So when you put a you put a lift kit on there and don't change those bushings you can get in a situation where uh, your bushings are are trying to hold your lift kit back you're getting too much articulation so the way uh, these work is uh, you get rid of the rubber and you you put this little phenolic uh, spacer on there i think they want to tell you it's urethane but it's not but anyway this ball will pivot in here instead of stretching stretch stretch stressing the rubber i almost couldn't talk here's the sleeve the cup so this will go in on top of the axle and then this will go in like so and then you'll drop this in on the other side and put this cap back on you got all these, these little cap screws that you'll uh, bolt it together with. Now, so these are spherical bearings. Sometimes people call them Johnny joints. Uh, Johnny joints were made by Curry, by John Curry. So what he did was John Curry just took a spherical bearing, encased it in basically rubber, and now that whole rubberized spherical bearing will pivot inside of there and that helps cushion vibration they're great they last a long time uh and so everyone just kind of adopted the name johnny joint but really that's not true spherical bearing uh, what john curry came up with is still a spherical bearing it's just encased in rubber it's a better spherical bearing Heim joints, I mean, uh, you know, obviously, uh, same thing. Uh, the spherical bearing company that was making uh, these monsters back 100 years ago uh, was was called, uh, you know, I don't know if it was Heim Industries or what, but the name of the company was Heim, so that's why they call them Heim joints. But what are they? Spherical bearings. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, get set up over here and we're gonna press these bushings out and, and start pressing these in. Now, Iron Rock makes a version of these that they say you can weld in, so I, I don't know, but I got the press in ones. I think, uh, I imagine if you're welding it in, it's a little bit smaller diameter. It probably goes right in easy and then you, you weld it. I don't know why you would do that, uh, to, to be honest. I mean, you know, the, uh, the control rod 
uh, you see he has, it's like a fork, you know, you got a flange on each side. So, you know, if the, uh, it's not like the bushing's gonna go anywhere. You know, once you put it in, it, it can't migrate out and fall off. But uh, anyway, we're gonna press them in. I don't really understand the uh, weld on ones. I don't see the point. All right, let's get started. you could see it or not but I was just uh, drilling out the rubber that's in the bushing you know I have a big seat clamp press cups and all that all that stuff but you just I really can't get anything in there very good so we're gonna try to open that thing up and then uh, cut the sleeve out with a the saws all if we can well we can that's what we're gonna do all right I got the center uh, and it's hot Get the center uh, bushing out So, just got to try to cut a slice right through the uh, sleeve that's left. If you get into the casting, it doesn't really matter. The next sleeve's pressed in. That groove's not going to matter. I mean, you don't want to cut deep into the casting. If you scratch it, it's not a big deal. So next, we'll get a punch and start working to uncurl it, get it to break free, and then we can drag it out of there. our new one now I always put a little just a little anti-seize on these stuff like this a little molly coat oh I guess you could argue it might help it slide in a little better I don't know but it doesn't hurt nothing whether it helps can't say going all right it is installed and it'll protrude through just a little bit and what you're supposed to do is take a punch and fold these over in like four places just to help keep it secure and then uh, put the guts in it All right, so now we're gonna torque them, 20 inch pounds. It's gonna take a while. But I think it's really critical that you actually follow the torque. Some things I don't care about the torque on, but however much you tighten these is how tight those plastic cups are gonna squeeze the ball. So, I would follow the recommended torque on this. All right, well, pre pretty typical, we, we had a problem. All right, so there's a look at the finished uh, product. Really 
ain't nothing to see. It's just that it's in. So, yeah. Had a hard time doing the video and and the work since the work kind of went south on me. Uh, so these screws, I, the whole time I kept wishing that they had uh, hardened screws. These are not. These are not hardened screws. These are just steel uh, cap screws, and they make hardened screws that are this size i i have a few around here somewhere i didn't go looking for them i don't no way have enough but the reason why we had a problem is because when you're trying to get eight holes to line up you know the, the nature of that task is going to cause at least one or two of the holes to kind of be stressed a little and <clears throat> You could generally, if it was a uh, a hard, if it was a hardened screw, you could just keep cranking down on the uh, on it and and force it to go in, and everything would eventually, you know, figure out how to have a happy relationship. But when they're soft like that, you can't because you can tell, you can feel that the head is about to round out, and you're like, well, I better back this off. And you can't back it off because the thread stretched. If they were those black, you know, the hardened ones are black. So if they were hardened, you wouldn't have thread stretching and you would be able to back them off and mess with them and, and do all of that. And I mean, I'm sure, you know, somebody out there is going, oh, I put them in, I didn't have any problems. All right, good. Somebody won the lottery too. I mean, sometimes you get lucky, uh, but I would contend that the nature of this particular task is going to uh, cause th that problem to be normal. Like that's going to be a normal problem. Uh, I still have to do the passenger side and I, I know that when I do that, that I'm just going to have to take my time, be patient and walk them down, you know, methodically and it'll all work out but that that's what you're gonna have to do you just got to be patient it's not a big deal uh, I, I i mean i i feel like i'm harping on it i'm not that's just life that, that's the way this stuff goes it's not a big deal but you need to be aware you know if you're someone who's never done this before and you're like yeah i can do that and i'm gonna order those and you know we're gonna accomplish this project i, I agree you can do it but be aware that that that's going to be an issue you may have to contend with so anyway good luck catch you later